Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Everybody. welcome back to my channel I've got a new tutorial today we're gonna be sewing up the sassy the sophisticated sassy by sophisticated craft designs I cut this out in a video earlier this week I cut a couple things out incorrectly and I think I explained them in the video which pieces those were they were these strap connectors Anyways, um, you guys, <laughs> look at this cute bag. This is the petite. So there are two different sizes when you buy the pattern. This is the petite and it is such a cute design. My vinyl's a little wrinkly from where I turned it. Um, <laughs> look how that front panel pops out though. Do you see that? How cute is that? It's super cute. I've never seen like a front panel like this before. I'm really digging it. The back one's just a um, flat one with a slip pocket. So there are lots of different variations you can do for this pattern. I think she lists like four or five different versions, clear version, um, this front panel and back panel, all different. You could do this panel for both front and back. Um, you could do a flat for front and back. It's up to you. Uh, pockets vary. You could do a plain back. You could do slip pocket. You could do a zipper or a zipper and a slip pocket. Just stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's adorable. So I used vinyl, a waterproof canvas. I interfaced with Decavel Light all out of my seam allowances on the main um, exterior pieces. I... I think that's all the interfacing and a piece of Peltex along the bottom or Decaville Heavy, I think I used along the bottom. Um, all my materials, let's go over my materials because they are freaking cute. This is from Zorrell, it's called Wrong Park. I mean, come on. It's adorable. Um, I use that for the front and back main panels and then this green and the purple are from the radiance line of endo love creation i'm using these mickey pulls which are from zorrell and the zipper tape um i know some of her products are are um, launching on may 2nd so if you don't see this black matte purple zipper tape that's why these pulls are old they're from like a year ago so i'm not sure if she still has them in stock or not and then I used my Celestia thread, which matched this so perfectly. And then all of my matte black hardware on my website. All right, so let's open her up. I mean, <laughs> those are the big stripes. I, for, I think they're called Beetlejuice stripes from Wizardry and Stitchery or Geeky Hardware. They're currently out of stock, um, but I think she's getting more in. And then zipper pocket here. I mean, what does my tag say? I said, it says it's handmade, so you better like it. <laughs> and another zipper pull from Zorrell. And then this is a bound bag. This is bound on both sides. Um, it's just, you know, it's one of those bags that needs it for the shape. I used uh, canvas binding from Sailrite. Um, it works fabulously. I love using their canvas for binding. Um, some people hate binding, some people love it. There's probably a way to make it into a birthing bag if you really wanted to try. There's always a way. I mean, I'm sure you can. I just think for this shape of bag, binding's the best. I would say this is maybe, um, a experienced beginner to intermediate pattern. It's got a few little, you know, uh, more intense little curves on it, but I always say anybody can try it. So give it a go. <laughs> um, anything else I need to share? I don't think so. I will link everything I used in the video below so you can find it. Some may be out of stock, some may not. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. And let's start sewing this cute little sassy bag. 
Okay, let's go over our pieces for the sophisticated sassy petite. Um, I have all my pieces here. I did use Decaville Light out of my seam allowances. This is a bound bag. Not sure, never made this before, but I think it'll turn out good with the way that it's done. Um, I, there are like four or five different options you can do on it, pockets and panels, and you just kind of want to pick which style you're going for. So I'm going to have a plain back panel with the slip pocket and then the pieced front pocket, and then I will do an inside zipper pocket. All right, here are all my pieces. This is my back panel, and I have two of those. I've got my, this is my exterior, and I do have the Decaville Light all out of the seam allowances. All of her pattern pieces have this red dotted line to where your exterior should be cut, or not your exterior, your interfacing should be cut. So just pay attention to that. There's my inside lining piece. Here is my back slip pocket. Now you could put this slip pocket on the inside lining as well. I'm doing vinyl and lining for a outside slip pocket for mine. My front panel pieces, I've got one exterior with my Decaville out of my seam allowances and one lining. I've got these front side panel pieces. There's left and right. Be sure that you cut them with your pattern piece up and your fabric up um, so they are the correct way. I have my lining, my exterior, and my Decaville light out of my seam allowances on both of them. Okay. My side panel connector tabs, I have two of those Decaville light. And my zipper and gusset pieces. So I have my side panel base here, Decaville out of the seam allowances, lining. Oh, and I do, I did cut a Decaville heavy piece to put on that base that I need to do. My side panel top zipper gusset, two pieces. Again, Decaville light on the exterior. My side panel bottom gusset, zipper gusset, two, Decaville, there you go. And then my handle, my grab handle and my strap connectors. There should, I'm pretty sure I'm reading this correctly. There should be three of these. We'll see if I'm right. I think that is correct. Three of those, okay? Um, because you have your handle part and then it connects with rectangle rings and then your side pieces. And then for my zipper inside pocket, I just did this back panel pocket piece. I cut that out for my inside zipper pocket piece. So hardware that you need. I also am doing a cross body strap. Okay, I already sewed it up. Ooh, look at that rainbow, Celestia thread. I'm using matte hardware, matte black hardware. That's just your normal crossbody strap on those. I've got these adorable poles that I found in my stash. They're from Zorel. I got these last year. It's so magical. Haven't used them yet. I'm gonna use those on my top zipper. I'm so excited. And then my inside zipper, I have another Mickey one. How cute is that? I've got my rectangle rings. I don't know, I might need D-rings. I need to go see if I need D-rings. My zipper tape and some rivets. And I think that's it. I think pretty easy. Okay, um, let's get started. Side note, you also need some bias tape or binding of some kind to bind the inside of this bag. I have my pre-made stuff from Sailrite that I'm going to use. So I will dig that out and use that when we bind. First steps is working on your back panel and your inside lining that goes up against that back panel because we are binding, so we'll be putting those together. Um, I have decided to do a zipper pocket on my back panel, so this seems kind of big. Yeah, I think I'm gonna cut this down just a little bit. Or, yeah, I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit. 
I was kind of guessing on the size for this. I'm gonna cut off about two inches. Let's see what that gives us. That might be, oh yeah, there you go, okay. I know my stripes are going different ways. I did that on purpose. I kind of wanted it to be different. All right, so I've drawn out my rectangle here. I've centered. I have a line marked here, even though you can't see it for the placement of the top of my piece. So I'm going to just crease those centers, line them up here. And I think I'm gonna try to slide a tag in between to get it in that zipper, so we'll see. We'll see if I'm successful. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sew around that rectangle. It's handmade, so you better like it. You actually never put a tag in like this before. Let's make sure it's straight. I think it looks good. It's right there. All right. All right. We have a loud yard tools happening every once in a while. I'm having my backyard and my front yard worked on, so I'll have to keep that in mind. All right, pull that through and give it a nice good crease into place. Or iron it. Um, I've got waterproof canvas I'm working here with, so I am just going to crease it. There's my tag. That's cute. Okay. All right. Press that down good. Also, when I sew it, I'll sew it down like that. Okay. I haven't cut my zipper yet. I should have done that ahead of time. Here we go. Get your zipper tape. Length of your pocket and your pull. Make sure you melt those ends. You don't want those to fray at all. I'm gonna grab my. I like to put on, I've learned if you put on the double sided tape before you put on the pull, it's a little bit easier because once you have that pull on, it kind of like gives it a little bump and it doesn't go on as well. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm going to put my pull on. <laughs> That's cute. So cute. All right. So now you want to take, I'm just like pressing that down. Okay. I'm going to fit this in here. I like to take my bottom piece off first, make sure my pocket is opening left to right, fit that in there first, and then do my top. Sew that on. All right, so now I want to just bring this bottom piece up and close up the whole thing. I will be trimming this down quite a bit, and that is fine. Start down here so I can come up and over. my zipper pocket. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just trim all this down and then we'll go to the back panel. My back panel is super simple. I'm just doing a slip pocket on mine. It's up to you what you want to do, but if you're doing a zipper pocket on the back, do that before you fuse your interfacing, like your Decavel light or whatever you're going to use because you kind of don't want that up against your piece when you do that zipper pocket. So just keep that in mind or cut out a spot for it or something. All right. Just a very basic slip pocket, nothing fancy. This would be another cute place to put a tag if you wanted to put a tag right here. stitch that all 
then I am going to baste it onto our back panel piece here. Adorbs. All right, so once you have that on, you know, you also could totally put a little magnetic snap there. Yeah. Not if you wanted to keep your phone in there, though. I don't think it's big enough for that. Okay, so now you want to take that back panel we did with your lining, and we are going to baste those wrong sides together so your right sides are out because again we are binding this bag i am sure there is a way to do this bag without binding for you people you binding haters <laughs> i know you're out there and that's totally fine um the nice thing is there's always a way to do it either way i think so i'm sure you could do a birthing method for this bag I'm not gonna show it, but I'm sure there is a way. All right, so I am just going to baste those two together. There's our back and lining panel all put together. Come here, thread. All right. Ta-da! Cute. All right. Let's move to the front pieces. Okay, so let's see if I can piece together this front panel. So I already put my little name tag on it there. So you want to get the lining and the exterior. And you are going to place those wrong sides together and you're just going to baste those two pieces just like we did with our back panel. We're just going to baste those together first before we add these side, side panel pieces. All right. got those two pieces basted together. I want to take, I'm going to start with my right side, my exterior right side. So there is markings on the pattern piece that you need to transfer. That is going to be what lines up with the corner of here. She also suggests putting clips into this piece, about eighth of an inch clips, three eighths inch apart up so this piece will curve into that a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna put it here first. I'm gonna clip it. This might be a little tricky. And then I want to clip here. Wait, am I clipping the right side? Yes, I am, okay. I have to kind of turn that up with it. I'm 
This might be hard to get perfect, so don't be too hard on yourself. Mine may not be perfect the first couple times. And you are supposed to have some hanging over. Hopefully that works. Okay, so I'm going to baste that first. How big of a, sorry, just a second. Okay, here we go. Now basting is done at a bigger stitch and usually a smaller seam allowance because you want to be able to take it out easily if you mess up is the idea, right? Because you're just piecing these together. So you might mess up. Definitely helps to have some kind of tool to keep everything in place. All right, so there is, so as you can see, because you did it on that curve, when you turn it out, it's going to pop out like that. And that's what gives it that dimension on that front panel. Kind of cool. All right. So now we want to piece the other one to the back of this lining. Okay. So to continue, you want to grab the left side. So this one is the right side. And now I'm grabbing the left side because when they're put together, they're the same way. Does that make sense? So left. So this is the right piece. And now I'm grabbing the left piece for the lining to put behind it. All right, here we go. Same thing. Clip it on there with that curve. Right sides are together because I will be flipping this out. And this may be a little more tricky. You can do it. You could totally use staples if you need to use staples. That is for sure an option. All right, so there's my piece. So now I wanna sew that at a bigger seam allowance, okay? But I'm gonna sew it this way, because if you sew it this way, Let's see, front panel facing up, yep. All right, so now I'm sewing at that bigger seam allowance all the way down. Let's see how I did, huh? All right, so see how I sewed along that curve? And then I want to flip them both out. Ta-da! Oh, that's cool. And 
And then let's see, I'm not sure if we top stitch that. Let me double check. That's cool. Mm, oh, use pinking shears. Let's do that. I bet that will lay better. If we use some pinking shears along there. Yes, yes. Let's do it. Might be a little thick. See if that helps it lay better. All right, it doesn't say to top stitch because that would kind of probably not go good. Well, I suppose you could top stitch along there. Should I? Ooh, should I, guys? Hmm, I think I'm going to. I'm going to top stitch. Why not? I think it'll make it look good. All right, I could be wrong. I could be right. <laughs> I top stitched it and now we want to baste these two pieces together and I'm going to baste from this side so I can see because my lining is a little bit short and that's okay because that'll be covered up in the binding process. You just want to make sure they stick together all right, that looks cool. All right, so there is the first side. You don't have to do this top stitch. I just thought it would look cute. All right, so now I'm going to repeat and do the second side. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat for this side.
right and there it is that's really cute oh i need to trim these off nope all right so there is my front and lining together that's really cute all right i'm going to go to the next step just as a little side note i read this piece wrong it says side panel grab handle exterior plus strap connectors too i just assumed it meant three total um but i'm pretty sure it means these two strap connectors here which i'm trying to find where's the pattern piece for it so you could see there it is They say connector tabs. Connector tabs, 2K. So that's what this is. I don't know why it's here and here. I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what I'm understanding it to be. So I have two extra pieces here that I won't be using. Okay, so I have my two connector tab pieces here. You weren't supposed to put Decavel on these. You're supposed to put them on the zipper panel piece that we're sewing them to, but it's okay. I'm just going to leave mine on. Uh, my machine can handle it. And I put a whole piece of Decavel light on my zipper panel piece anyway, so it'll be covered one way or the other. I should be good. So you just take your raw edges on these connectors you fold them into the middle so I've got two of those okay don't sew them or anything yet just fold them into the middle set those aside get your handle piece center line tape and it's not my tape's not all the way to the edges because we are going to sew this as one um, continuous piece so I'm going to start and I'm going to fold my raw edges in and then I'm going to slip on my hardware and then sew this together in a full loop Okay, so it's not all the way to the edges, but I'm going to slip on my hardware. And then I'm going to take these right sides together on my edges here, and I'm going to sew that shut so it's a loop around. Make sure you put your hardware on. Snip these little corners off here just to reduce your bulk. And then you can put double-sided tape there if you want to help keep these seams down. Or you could put it down the center, however you want to do it. I'm just going to do a little tiny piece here. And fold that down. And then same thing for the other side. I'll just keep that seam nice and flat and then if you want you can lay another little piece across there to fold this all into the center Want to turn it so your seam is on the inside of this handle we're going to be putting it together like this with the seam in the center as much as you can and we're going to be sewing this handle together so it's one complete piece
me. There's my handle. Cute. All right, next up. All right, so we want to do some markings real quick. On the wrong side, you need to put a marking on one end of each. And actually, I want it going this way. Mine is kind of directional. I want my mark to be right there. And for this, and the send right there. All right, and then I'm just gonna put a tiny piece of tape to hold this in place when I fold it over my connector. On both ends here. All right, so I wanna go down and through and I'm folding it to that mark that I just made. All right there, good. I'm just gonna put a clip to keep that in place and then I'll do the same thing on this side. Right there. Okay. Perfect. All right, so I want to get my top zipper gusset. Top zipper gusset exterior. Okay. All right, so I want to mark along the edge here. Right there. That's going to be my handle placement marking. You want to get your connector that you just did here. I'm going to put some tape along the back. I kind of go a little up over that fold, just a tiny bit. All right, and then you're going to want to put that along this. And we will sew it on. So line it up, raw edge here. Just like that. And then we'll get the other side too. Like that. All right, we're going to sew that on.
Okay, so now that I have that sewn on, I'm gonna go ahead and put a rivet here and a rivet here and probably just to match, I'll do a couple on the handle as well and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, now we wanna complete our zipper panel. So I've got my handle piece here and I am going from the side that is closest to the edge here from the handle and that's where I'm gonna first sew on my zipper. So I'm gonna take this piece right side up and my zipper right side down, so right sides together, and I'm gonna baste it along that edge first, and I am going to wait to add my zipper pulls after. So, just so I'm not fighting with the pulls. And it will be kind of awkward there because your um, hardware is just a little bit in the way. So, all right, I'm gonna baste that first. What I have now I'm going to take my other piece my lining and sew that on top so I'm putting it all right sides together sandwiching that zipper in the middle and now I'm going to sew that on at my full seam allowance All right, so after you have those both sewn on, you wanna turn them so they're right sides out and we will top stitch and baste the raw edges closed. Okay, so I'm gonna top stitch first.
So if you have the same sort of walking foot as me, your foot should pretty much ride right us ride right alongside this handle on both sides um, for the top stitch. And if it doesn't and it's getting in the way, you may have to change to a more narrow foot or a zipper foot. So that's the first side of it. Okay, now you wanna work on this other side. You're pretty much repeating the same things on the other side of the zipper with this more narrow um, zipper gusset piece. So I'm gonna start up here and baste first, and then I will sew on the lining, flip them, and top stitch. All right, so there's my zipper panel all done. I'm gonna put on my zipper pulls real quick. I'm gonna do a double um, zipper pull. So to do a double zipper pull, you pretty much just put one on each end and then they meet in the middle. Easy peasy. Hopefully, All right?
There it goes. We need to now finish our zipper gusset um, panel completely. So we need to add our bottom pieces. So I have my two bottom panel pieces here. I'm gonna take my exterior to one end of this zipper panel right here. And I'm gonna baste this on first before I sew on the lining. And then I'm gonna flip it over, grab the lining side, line that up, and then you're gonna sew that at your full seam allowance. I'm going to flip them both out and top stitch, and then I will add them to the other side to make a full circle. All right, so that side's connected. So now I'm going to take the end of this piece and bring it up so it's a circle now to the, meet, meet this end here and repeat the same steps. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to grab this end and meet it up here. So I both loop on both ends. Okay. Full seam allowance on this side. Turn it out and top stitch. I know it's hard to see that. Okay, so both edges are top stitch, and now I want this whole thing to be one piece. So I need to connect these bottom two and base them together. So I go centers, clip, centers, clip. I just do that all along. You don't have to do a ton, but just enough so it's kind of evenly dis uh, distributed between your pieces. Okay. I'll flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. All right, now I'm going to just baste those together. So it's just one full circle and all the pieces are basted together. I'm going to just turn it this way. It's kind of easier to do it this way, too. My bobbin might run out, too.
Okay. That is our full gusset. I'm going to mark my centers on that, top and bottom. And then we're gonna start putting the whole thing together. That's cute. So we are going to connect the gusset to the front panel. So I have my top and bottoms um, marked, my centered top bottoms on everything. And then you wanna take the gusset and turn it inside out there. Your panel though, your front panel is right side out. So right side up, I guess I should say. So you're doing right sides together and you're doing the smaller part of this zipper gusset to the front side of the bag, okay? So I have my front side, the smaller, skinnier side of the gusset here, right sides together, and I'm just going to line up those centers first and clip along the top, and then I'll line up my bottom uh, centers, and then I'll kind of meet it all in the middle. And then just kind of fit it all in there. It should go pretty nicely. This curve might be a little difficult along here. You can always clip this gusset if you need to. I think it's fitting okay though. There's a couple ways you can sew this on. You can sew it just at your normal seam allowance, which she suggests one fourth to a three eighth, or you can baste it first at an eighth of an inch just to make sure it's all in place and then sew it at your full seam allowance. I think if you haven't done this many times and you're somewhat of a beginner with the binding process, that might be a good way to do it. I think I'm just going to sew at my seam allowance, full seam allowance, and I'm going to do the one fourth. Okay, I have that all clipped on there. I'm going to go ahead and sew. So, usually when I do bags like this, I sew it with my, um, my gusset up. But she suggests to sew it with your lining side up, gusset down. I think because of these curves, which kind of makes sense because they're kind of, they're a little funky. Um, so here we go. Thank you. 
don't be afraid to get your hand in there. Like I'm really turning the bag as I go. Like really use, use your other hand to help you out in this. Okay, some reason my video cut off. Um, I went ahead and clipped on my binding. I'm not taking it all off. So I will show you with the next side how I did that. It's pretty much just fold over, um, fold over canvas. It's already pre, pre done like this from Sale Right. You can use actual bias tape. You can use a strip of waterproof canvas. You can use um, double sided elastic. So many different options. So I just folded it over and clipped it all on. And now we are going to sew this on. And I did say that um, when I was talking to myself and it wasn't recording <laughs> that you could change your thread to match whatever binding you are using. I am sticking with the rainbow just because I want that contrast. So it's up to you. So after you do that, you want to check to make sure that you got both sides. See, doesn't the rainbow look pretty on that? <laughs> so I want to check the outside. It looks like I caught it all. Yay! So I'm just going to turn this so we can see what we have real quick. And then we will add the other panel. It's a cute little bag. Push everything out so it all sits nice. Oh my goodness, look how cute that is. Oh my goodness, that's kind of adorable. 
I love these <laughs> zipper pulls too. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and repeat the process for this side. Okay, I would think this side should be a little bit easier because you're not dealing with these, you know, the curvy part. So same process, start with your centers, go out from there and get everything else to kind of fit into that space. And it really helps to open up your zipper usually. It just gives it a little bit more give. Um, when you're doing your gusset. I'll see mine's already coming undone. Now for this one, I'm gonna just do some um, clips in my gusset right here. Very small, like eighth of an inch clips, nothing crazy, but enough that it will just lay in that curve nicely. Yep, perfect. So this time I will sew this panel with my gusset side up. Sew that on.
All right. First go around. Looks good. Ooh, we're almost there. Okay. I'm going to trim just a little down because I did go over just a little bit. And I want my seams to be even with each other when I do the binding. Not a huge deal at all. Trim it down just a little. All right. Let's do our other side. All right, so I'm just gonna take my fold over canvas here. I'm just folding it in half and encasing that raw edge of my bag. Super simple. And just do that all the way around. Right. That's got it all the way around. So now I'm going to sew that on.
did it. We made a bag, guys. Oh my goodness. Let's see, did we catch it? Yes. It looks so good. Look at that. I think that's the best looking looking binding I have ever I have ever done. That I didn't have to retouch or anything. Okay, here we go. Let's turn this. It might be a little bit difficult, but we can do it. My hands are about done. <laughs> we can do it. tiny pucker. Oh, that makes me mad. <laughs> That's okay. It happens. See, it happens to all of us. Puckers happen. That should be a sticker. Puckers happen. All right. Get it pushed out really good. That's what makes it look nice. Roll that seam. All right. Oh my goodness. Here is our cute little sassy petite. Ah! <laughs> it's really cute. Uh, that is really cute. That'd be cute with some feet on it too. That's it guys. That's it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> and then the crossbody strap you hook on right here to these um, rectangle connectors. And that's your bag. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this video helps you figure this cute little pattern out. All of the um, things that I used are linked down below. Some of this might not be in stock anymore. I don't know if this print is, and I don't know if these pulls are, um, but Zorel has some awesome different prints if you're looking for something unique. And um, that's it. All right. Please like and subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.